Hi everyone, this is Lari for BeckyHiggins.com and today I'm going to show you how to use a Project Life digital template in Photoshop Elements. You can find all of our digital templates for sale at ShopBeckyHiggins.com under the digital section. You will need to pick out the one that you like, download it and unzip it and have it ready to go. Also, you will need to go to Adobe.com and download and install Photoshop Elements. If you are using full version Photoshop, you can still use this tutorial, but your screen may look a little bit different. Once you have all that ready, you're ready to go. We're going to start by opening up Photoshop Elements 13. If you're using an older version of Photoshop Elements, that's probably just fine. It may just look a little bit different on your screen. And from this screen, we're going to choose Photo Editor. Now when we open it up, we need to make sure that we're in the Expert Mode up here. And we also need to come up here to Windows and turn on our Layers Palette, which will pop up over here on the right-hand side. Now over here on the left-hand side, you're going to see all of these tools. And today we're going to focus on the Move tool, the Paint Bucket tool, and our Color Swatches. Now when we come up here and we select the Move tool, you'll see that it pops up this little box on the bottom and it shows us some of our options for the Move tool. Now we want to make sure that we have this Auto Select Layer checked and also this Bounding Box checked. And then we can close down this little option to give us some more room. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up our Photo Bin down here. And it's going to pop up this little window down here and this will show us a little thumbnail of all of our files that we have open. Now we're ready to get started. We're going to come up here to File and Open and we're going to navigate to the place that we have saved our template and we're going to open this PSD doc. Now you'll notice that when you open your template over here in your layers panel it's opened a bunch of layers and if you need to see these layers better you can come up to this little menu up here and choose panel options and you can change the thumbnail sizes to make it a little bit easier for you to see. Now the first thing that we're going to do with this template is that we're going to hide this intro layer so that we can get to the design underneath. And to do that, we're going to click on this little eyeball icon next to this top layer. And this will turn it off so it's no longer visible. Now underneath you can see the design for design A. Now you'll notice as I start clicking around on this template on all the different rectangles that each of these rectangles has its own layer over here in the layers palette. And this is going to be important later when we start creating clipping masks. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a picture to this 4x6 area right here. And to do that I'm going to select my move tool and then I can either click on my layer right here or I can click on it in the layers palette. Either way I just want to make sure that this layer is highlighted. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my photo. So I'm going to come up here to File and Open and find my picture. And it's going to open it in a separate tab over here. Now to add my picture to my layout, all I'm going to do is I'm going to click down on my picture and I'm going to drag it down here to the photo bin where my template is. And I'm going to let go. And it's going to show up here on top of my template. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to tell Photoshop to make this picture the same size and shape as my 4x6 rectangle that's up here. So to do that we're going to create a clipping mask. Over here in the layers panel you'll see that my picture is on top of the layer that I want to create a clipping mask with. And that's really important. You need to make sure that your picture or your card is on top of the layer that you want to create a clipping mask with. To create a clipping mask, you're going to hover your mouse on the line between the two layers. And if you are on a Mac, you're going to hold down your Option key and you're going to press click. Now if you're on Windows, you're going to press your Alt key and then click. So now you'll notice that our picture has taken the shape of that 4x6 rectangle and the top right. Now you'll notice that my picture is way too big for this 4x6 area up here, so I need to resize it. So to do that, make sure that you've targeted your picture layer over here in the layers palette. And now we're going to look for this bounding box. 
that's showing the edges of my picture. And I'm gonna pick one of these corner transform handles and I'm gonna click down on it. Now you'll notice that when I do that, it, it pops open some options down here at the bottom. Right here where it says constrain proportions, you wanna make sure that that is checked. Now if you're working with an earlier version of Photoshop Elements, this might not be an option for you, but all you need to do is to hold down the shift key and it will constrain your proportions for you. If you are in 13 and you choose the constrain proportions option, you do not need to hold down your shift key. So now that we have that checked, we're gonna click down on one of these corner handles and we're gonna click and drag to resize. You can also use your arrow keys to nudge it into place where you're happy with it. And once you get it where you're happy, you're gonna click on this check mark box to confirm. And now our picture is done. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a title card to this four by six slot over here. So I'm gonna select it with my move tool and I'm gonna go to File and Open. And I'm gonna open my Project 52 first and last page cards because this is gonna be the title page to my 2015 album. And I'm gonna go under my first page cards and I'm gonna choose this pink card. I'm gonna close down these options and open up my photo bin. And with my move tool selected, I'm gonna click on my card and drag it down to my template and let go. Now I'm gonna move this over to my left hand four by six area. Now you'll notice in my layers panel that my card is right over the layer that I wanna make a clipping mask with. So again, to make a clipping mask, we're gonna hover between these two layers and if you're on a Mac, it's gonna be Option and Click. If you're on Windows, it's gonna be Alt and Click. Now if you want to, once you've made your clipping mask, you can resize the, the card a little bit if you wanna show a little bit more design or if you wanna move it around just a tiny bit, just to your liking. And then we're gonna press the green check mark to commit. Now since this is my title page, I'm just gonna go in and add the rest of the cards from the first and last page card kit from the Project 52 edition to each of these slots. So I'm gonna start with this three by four rectangle on the left hand side. I'm gonna click down on it to select the layer and I'm gonna go up to file and open and I'm gonna open this card right here. I'm gonna pop up my photo bin again with my move tool selected I'm gonna click and drag this card down to the template thumbnail. And we're gonna move it into position. And again, we're gonna come over here to our layers palette. We're gonna hover between the two layers that we wanna create a clipping mask with. And on the Mac, you're gonna press down your option key and then click. If you're on Windows, it's gonna be Alt and click. Then you can move your arrow keys to kind of refine the position of your card. Now that you're familiar with how to make clipping masks, you can go in and add cards or pictures to any of these slots. And that's what I'm gonna do right now to finish up this page.
Now we have all of our cards and our picture added to our template. So the last thing that we can do is that we can change the appearance of our background here if we don't like this gray color. And to do that, we go down here to our background layer in our layers palette, and it's the very bottom layer. Now, one thing that we can do is that we can turn off our background layer, and you can see now it just shows this checkered background, and that indicates that it's just transparent. There's nothing there. But when we save it as a JPEG file, it'll become white. So you'll see I've saved a sample for that so that you can see what it looks like. And now it's just white. So the other thing that we can do is we can add a pattern paper to our background. And to do that, I'm going to turn our background back on. And I'm going to target this background layer. And I'm going to come up here to File and Open. And I'm going to open a pattern paper from the Midnight Paper Pack. Now we can add the paper just like we did our picture and our cards. With our Move tool selected, we're going to click on the paper and drag it down to our template thumbnail and let go. And then you can use your arrow keys if you need to refine the position a little bit. So you'll see that I added this paper to our background. Another thing that we can do is that we can just add a solid color to the background that will match our cards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and delete this pattern paper layer. And I'm going to click on the background layer again in the layers palette. And I'm going to choose my paint bucket tool. Now down here in the options, you want to make sure that your opacity is set to 100%. And then I'm going to click on this swatch over here. This is our foreground swatch. And we're going to click on that. And you'll see that I have this little eyedropper now. So I can go anywhere in my layout and sample a color that I may like. And I'm going to choose this dark blue color and click OK. Now with our background layer selected, we're going to use our paint bucket tool and click down and fill our background layer. And now it matches perfectly to our cards. The last thing I wanna go over with you is how to save your layout. Now this is something that you wanna do early and you wanna do it often throughout your creative process so that you don't lose any of your work. You're gonna go up here to File, Save As, and you're gonna save your, your file as something else other than the original name. That way you can keep your original template and use it as many times as you want to. I'm going to name mine 2015 title page. And you can change where you want to save it to. And I'm going to keep it in this Photoshop format. And that preserves all of our layers so that we can go back and we can change any mistakes that we have or we can switch out any cards that we want at any time. And then click Save. Now, I also want to save a copy to send to my favorite printer. So I'll go up here to File, Save As, and I can keep it the same file name, but I'm going to change the format to JPEG. And I'm going to choose Save. Now it's going to ask me what my quality I want to be, and I always set it for the maximum so that we have the best quality possible. And click OK. Now our layout is saved and it's ready to send off to our printer. I hope you had fun today learning how to use this template in Photoshop Elements. Photoshop can be a little tricky, so just be patient and practice. And if you have any questions, make sure that you email us at digital at beckyhiggins.com.